This video is sponsored by Squarespace. This week I was planning on making a video about how Games Workshop seems to be getting a bit better lately, how they've been a little bit more generous with some of their rules, how I'm super excited for the new edition of Kill Team, and how I'm even starting to regret not picking up that Skaven Tide starter set because everyone seems to be having so much fun with Spearhead. However, a few issues have started to crop up for both of these games lately that unfortunately now makes me want to play neither of them, and I think personally form a disturbing pattern for Games Workshop's future release schedule. So today I'd like to talk about both of these issues that are concerning me, as well as retracting my previous statement where I said that I thought this new edition of Kill Team could possibly be the best beginner game for new people wanting to get into the hobby. It's really not, it's not. Don't, don't play Kill Team as your first game. I'm sorry that I made that video. I was horribly wrong. Part one, I was wrong about Kill Team. So the new edition of Kill Team still looks awesome. I am glad that I pre-ordered it. Everyone in the Kill Team sphere online seems to be really excited about it. I'm excited about it. And overall, the brand new starter set seems to be a pretty good deal, at least by Games Workshop standards. The price went up a little bit, pretty much just in line with inflation, as I predicted in my previous Kill Team video, which is not great, but also not the worst thing in the world. I paid $238, I believe, for my box of the new Kill Team set from a local retailer. That's a, a little bit of a discount. And I don't feel like I got ripped off. I don't feel like I got a great deal either, but I don't feel like I got ripped off. I feel like $238 is the amount that I expect to pay for what's in the box. However, as I was pre-ordering this new box set, I noticed a disturbing trend with the rest of the Kill Team products that went up for pre-order. As pretty much all of the other new Kill Team products, which are mostly just repackaged old Kill Teams, have all gone way, way up in price. And I believe this is the second price hike that Kill Team has seen in the last year or two. Sure, these repackaged Kill Teams do come with the new tokens, I'll give you that, but they're 70 to $80 now, and I feel like recently they were $50 or $60, which is really where I would like to see these Kill Teams as an introductory product for, you know, getting your friends into the game. These $70 to $80 sets would feel like a better deal to me if they came with a little bit more content in the box. Let's say if they came with the relevant cards to play the game instead of the card sets coming separately in $30 packs. So if you want to get a new kill team, you're basically paying, what, $100, $210? On top of this, the new rule book, the new extra cards and equipment packs, all of the accessories aren't cheap either. And it feels very much to me like consumers are just being punished for wanting to expand their game experience or wanting to play a team that isn't included in the new core box. And I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but what GW is doing here is a sales tactic as old as time. They're basically saying like, look, you could buy each component separately, or you could buy the nice new big box, which comes with two teams and everything you need to play. Wow, what a good deal this new big box is. You should buy it now before it sells out. And honestly, this just feels kind of gross to me. I mean, I know this is what Kill Team and other GW games have been doing for years now, but releasing it all at once like this makes it seem even more obvious, even more egregious, where if they'd spaced these releases out a little bit, it might feel a little bit more obvious what they're doing here. As the pattern up until now with a lot of Games Workshop games have been that they release the, the big box, you know, the Hive Storm, the Indominus, whatever, and if you buy this early bundle, you get a little bit more of a good deal. You get everything you need. Usually you get two teams, all the rules, all the extras, things like that. And then a few months later, they release everything individually for slightly higher prices if you just wanted one or two of the things. And for some reason, that feels 
a lot less uh, gross to me than releasing the whole thing at once and being really obvious about the sales tactic. But even back then when they were doing this, it still felt not that gross. You know, if you want to buy another kill team, it's 50 to $60. That seems like a really reasonable price point to buy a new team of 10 to 13 figures. Whereas the new price point of 70 to $80 plus an additional card pack that you have to buy, making it more like $100 or $110 if you want everything really makes me feel like they're just pushing people towards buying the big boxes and really just like a penalty for buying the individual sets. And it's a real shame because I feel like over the past year or two, Kill Team has been this really great introductory game to the 40k universe, where if you're joining a group who's playing Kill Team, it's like an extra 50 or $60 if you want to buy your first team and join in. Whereas now it's more like $100 if you want to join in, which is a lot less appealing to a beginner gamer, to someone who you're trying to get to join the group. We also used to have compendium teams, which were even cheaper, and I don't think those are being supported. Are they? I'll check after I record this and I'll, I'll put it on the screen right now. Are the compendium teams being supported? Yeah, that's what I thought. I feel like just a few months ago, Kill Team to me felt like one of the best entry points to miniature painting and collecting in the 40k universe. Whereas now it just feels like an overpriced luxury item. But you know what's not an overpriced luxury item? That's right, it's this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website and hosting platform that I've been using for just a little bit over a decade now for all of my website needs. You just pick from one of their fabulously designed pre-made templates or build your own template from scratch with their brand new step-by-step -step tool, Squarespace Blueprint. No coding or technical knowledge required. I've been using my Squarespace website for quite a while now to host a gallery of my painted miniatures, all of my painting reference documents, as well as an online store, which has been super easy to get set up and keep updated and accepts a variety of online payment options. So if you need a website, why not check out squarespace.com today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Dana Howell for 10% off your very first purchase of a website or domain. So yeah, I think as this video goes up, I'm gonna be going back to my previous Kill Team video and place a little disclaimer on it saying how I no longer think Kill Team is the best game for new gamers. And I think, I think it might be Grimdark Firefight. I don't know, I'll have to try that game out, but I think that might be the real best game if you wanna play a 40K like experience. And the real sad part is the Kill Team core box still feels like a pretty great experience to me. I don't, I mean, I don't have it in my hands, but it looks like it's going to be a great experience for someone like me. It's still this full playset type product at a good price point that is the sort of thing I like. It comes with the terrain, it comes with the miniatures, it comes with all the, the stuff and the trimmings that you would want from Kill Team. But unfortunately, if you wait too long until these boxes get sold out, or if you just want to play neither of the teams in the box and, and you wanna buy the components individually, you're gonna get heavily taxed by the GW ecosystem for this decision. But hey, at least the new rules for all the kill teams are still free online, so you could just proxy your own figures that you already own, or 3D print some proxies to use if your friends are cool with it. If your friends are not cool with that, get better friends. It's just really, really nice and generous of Games Workshop that they've decided to publish all of the rules for the previous kill teams free online. What an uncharacteristic thing for them to do. I mean, they've been doing that for years now for Age of Sigmar, but like, you know, that's what we've always expected from Age of Sigmar, right? At least that was the case until just recently. You see, Age of Sigmar's War Scrolls, which have all previously been 
free to use online in every other edition, it looks like are no longer going to be free online, at least once each faction gets their battle tome. Which is really a shame, I think. One of the appealing things to me about Age of Sigmar 4th edition is that all of the rules for all of the units for your armies were all free online right, right when the edition started. Uh, but as of the new release of the Battle Tome Skaven, it looks like all of the Skaven rules are no longer going to be free. You got to go and buy that 60 to 70 dollar big book and let's say you want to build an army list with those rules well you're gonna have to buy the app which oh wait it's behind a paywall and oh no that app paywall is behind another paywall of warhammer plus for some reason uh at least i think it's two paywalls i i can't actually verify it because when i tried to sign up for warhammer plus it told me that it wasn't available in canada so I guess I can't legally build lists in a digital way for Age of Sigmar 4th edition. Okay. So yeah, for those of you not aware, in Age of Sigmar, we have historically always had the rules free online from Games Workshop. And that was one of the big appeals of the game system to me is they have this online tool called War Scroll Builder where you could just pick the units that you want and start planning out your armies before you buy the individual components. However, War Scroll Builder is now being retired. I think it's it's still up, but it's going to be retired soon because Games Workshop would like you to instead use their official app, which requires a monthly subscription fee, and it doesn't even have all of the rules for all of the units in it. You need to buy the individual battle tomes for each army and then plug in the code or the sorry the, the QR code into the app for each army that you own. So you can't check on your opponent's armies. You can only build lists in a very it's a very, very regimented system. I used to use War Scroll Builder all the time when I was collecting and painting Age of Sigmar armies. I often didn't end up playing with those armies, but I definitely made some purchasing decisions that I wouldn't have otherwise because we had this free army building tool. But I guess Games Workshop doesn't want that free money. They, they want the money from a steady membership system that's built behind another steady membership system. Listen, I really, really want to love Games Workshop. I want to love their IPs. I want to love their games. I mean, I do. I do love their games. I do love their IPs. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been running this channel for the past five years. Happy anniversary to this channel. But they just make it so, so difficult to encourage people to support them when they do these kinds of business practices. I was seriously considering maybe picking up the Skaven Tide set or maybe updating some of my older Age of Sigmar armies to use some of them, at least at least with the new Spearhead system, which seems quite fun. I feel like I might even be able to get some local friends into it if I had two armies set up for it. I was even on the verge of maybe getting Warhammer Plus, at least for the free miniatures, and maybe to do a review of it. But I can't. <laughs> because I'm in Canada and we have language laws, I guess. Like, listen, even even if the army builder was behind the Warhammer Plus paywall, but we just had access to the rules for all the units, that would be fine. I would be fine with that. I would be happy to pay a monthly fee if I got access to Warhammer Plus and all the army builders. That seems greedy, but fine, I would do it. But to take it a step further and make you have to buy the individual microtransactions for each unit's battle tome just feels excessive. It feels very much like they want people to start pirating their rules because they're making it so difficult to access them. So yeah, I think this is just a really bad look for Games Workshop and it makes me want to spend less money on them. Whereas if they had more good faith business practices, I would be happy to throw money at all of their overpriced models because their models are beautiful. 
I would even be happy to throw money at an overpriced lore book. I would be happy to pay money for this if it was just art and story, right? But to make it so that I have to buy these kinds of books like every few months, this is probably a bad example. I should be holding a codex. But to make it so that I have to buy another one of these every three years, just so that I can get the most up-to-date rules for my army, and then not even letting me use it in an app because the app's behind a paywall, it's just like remove one or two of those steps and I would be into it. It's just because they have so many hoops to jump through and there's so many microtransactions along the way. It's just like, really, how, how, how long are we going to do this? How many extra little dollars do you want out of me that I would have been happy to spend on you if you just approached this in good faith? The main point I have is just taking something that has historically been free and trying to lock it behind a paywall. Nobody likes that. And if you do these sorts of business practices more than once, you know, every few months so that YouTubers like me can make videos about it. Well, I guess it's good for us because we have things to talk about, but I would much rather just feel good about my purchases. I want to play Warhammer. It's what the people around me want to play. I, I want to give you my money, but you just make it so difficult. So I think for me personally, I'm just going to stick to buying the big bargain boxes, the Hive Storms, the Skaven Tides. I think those boxes are still really great deals. I'm just done buying overpriced rules from Games Workshop. I'll buy the models, I'll buy the bargain boxes, but for me, I'm, I'm done. For this week anyway. And honestly, that feels like what they're encouraging the average consumer to do with their current behavior. As to me, the average GW release seems way, way too high, and I think they're doing it on purpose to make the bargain boxes feel like a better deal. In fact, I know they're doing that. That's what they're doing. It's so blatant, which is just in incredibly depressing. But I guess that's just where we're at right now. I think I'll be skipping on Skaven Tide for now. I think I'm going to be skipping out on the entire fourth edition of Age of Sigmar, despite how cool it looks, despite how fun I hear Spearhead is. I just don't want to get into that ecosystem of paying $60 for a battle tome that's not going to be good in three years and not being, I mean, you, you've heard the video, you know my reasoning. But I will still be covering Kill Team. I'm really excited to get the new box in. Hopefully I'll even be able to comment on the rules as I have a group of people now to play Kill Team with and that's pretty exciting. And honestly, that makes it all feel worth it. So stay tuned for more Kill Team coverage going forward. I hope to paint up some of the new models, maybe even the new terrain. But for now, I think that's the only Games Workshop product that I want to engage with. But let me know what you think down in the comments. Do you feel as passionately about these subjects as I do? Do you think I should know better by now and just stop buying things from Games Workshop? Before we go, as always, thank you so much to all of our generous patrons. I could not be doing this without you, so thank you very, very much, each and every one of you. And with that, I will see each and every one of you in the next video. Oof. <sighs>